Hello everyone, my name is Jun Moan from Korea University and welcome to the module 3 entitled Cases of a Database Administration of a Major Countries. As you can see in this title, this module 3-2 aims to introduce global applications of data government. Government across the globe have tried to establish data-based government so to achieve this, they have tried to establish the necessary legal foundation and based on it, they have made various applications. Global examples put emphasis on the necessity of a concrete foundation and various applications based on it. This is the objective of this model. First, we need to understand the importance of a systematic preparations of a data-based government. Second, we will explore various policy interventions for data-based government. Thirdly, we will see various applications in different policy contexts. Then we can discuss what are expected effects of a data-based government. This is the structure of this module. Firstly, I will introduce how the steps of a data-based government can be classified. Secondly, I will introduce the establishment of a data foundation. Thirdly, we will explore how the data-based government can improve public service efficiency. Finally, we will explore how a new opportunity can be created by a data-based government. Uh, this slide actually summarizes all the contents I will present today. Establishing data-based government is a complicated process. However, we can segment this complex process into the following three. First one is a building data foundation. Second one is a improving public service. Third one is a creating a new public policy opportunities. So, the first step is uh, you know uh, collecting data and then make them uh, make public sectors use it. If the government or the public sector establish a concrete data foundation, firstly and directly, they can improve public service quality. But if the data-based government has been established concretely, we can have another ad advantages such as uh, creating new public policy opportunities. Let's explore these three steps one by one. The data-based government starts with uh, efficient data collection and sharing, which is the first step. So it is uh, crucial to establish legal foundation. In this respect, European Union has established various legal foundation, as you can see in this slide. The Euro European Strategy for Data has been set up 2020 and the Data Governance Act was, has been made 2020. The Data Act 2020 and based on these strategies and then legal foundations, European Union has made a data space, so-called 10 European Common Data Space. Uh, let's see one by one. Firstly, EU, I mean European Union, established a European data strategies in 2020. This strategy aims to create a single market for data. It includes uh, various promotion policies such as uh, 4 to 6 billion euro investment in common European data space and a European federation of a cloud infrastructure and services. So we can see this European data strategy 
defines the strategic direction uh, policy agendas to be implemented up to five years. EU made the Data Governance Act in 2020. This law was proposed to increase trust in data sharing, strengthen machine strengthen mechanisms to increase data availability and overcome technical obstacles to the reuse of data. To support the setup and development of a common European data space in strategic domains involving both private and public players in sectors such as health, environment, energy, agriculture, mobility, finance, manufacturing, public administration, and skills. Data Governance Act emphasizes the following four broad sets of measures, which is uh, mechanisms to facilitate the reuse of a certain public sector data that cannot be made available as open data. Measures to ensure the data in intermediaries will function as a trustworthy organizations over data sharing or pooling within the common European data space. Measures to make it easier for citizens and businesses to make their data available for benefit of a society. Measures to facilitate data sharing, in particular to make it possible for data to be used across sectors and borders and to enable the right data to be found for the right purpose. In 2020, EU established Data Act, which set up rules on who can use and who can access what data for which purpose across all economic sectors in the EU. As in the case of Data Governance Act, this Data Act also defines four broad and important measures, which is measures to increase legal uh, certainty for companies and consumers who generate data on who can use what such data at what under conditions, and incentives for manufacturers to continue investigating high quality data generations, and measures to prevent abuse of uh, con contractual imbalances that hinders fair data sharing, means for public sector bodies to access and use data held by the private sector that is necessary for specific public interest purpose, new rule settings, the right framework conditions for customers to effectively switch between different providers of a data processing service to unlock the EU cloud market. According to the European Data Strategy, Data Governance Act, and the Data Act, EU has made a common European data space in which barrier, various sectoral data is collected and pooled so open for utilization. Data of nine various domains from health, industrial, and manufacturing, agriculture, to skills are pulled to be shared. For example, a Green Deal data space to use the major potential of data in support of Green Deal priority actions on issues such as climate change, circular economy, pollution, biodiversity, and deforestation. An energy data space to promote a stronger availability and cross-sector sharing of data in a customer-centric, secure, and trustworthy manner. Data spaces for public administrations to improve transparency and accountability of public spending and spending quality, fighting corruption, both at EU and national level. There was an EU case, but other countries like Estonia and UK, they also have established concrete, strong uh, legal foundation. 
Estonia is also one of the countries which established a strong and concrete foundation for the data-based government. For example, Estonia made the Estonian government cloud, which supports the modernization and renewal of existing information system, allowing the gov government to embrace opportunities offered by uh, cloud technologies. This solution will help to integrate the existing siloed IT infrastructure of uh, Estonian public sector into a shared pool of resources. Also, Estonia government is expanding this cloud system not only domestically but also as an online system that crosses borders. Think about the advantages of a data-based government. They need to be limited to physical boundaries. And if we upload all the data into the cloud, there, there is no physical restriction. It can be extended, expanded to everywhere in online system. So they uh, introduced this idea to make the uh, virtual uh, online uh, cloud called Data Embassy. So Data Embassy is an extension in the cloud of Estonian government, which means the state owns server resources outside its territorial boundary. So this is, I think, an innovative concept for handling state information since the states usually store their information within their physical boundaries. Data embassy resources are under Estonian state control, secured against cyber attacks or crisis situation with KSI blockchain technologies, and are capable and are capable not only providing data backups but also operating the most critical service. United Kingdom is also one of the leading countries which has established a sound foundation for the data-based government. In 2013, the UK government selected big data as one of the eight core national technologies and established Administrative Data Research Network, so-called ADRN, to encourage data collection and open by each government department. So UK Cabinet Office, they established release of data fund to help each ministry efficiently collect data and then to share with other ministry. So as you can see in this diagram, there are five basic principles of the ADRN, which is open data by default, quality and quantity, usable by all, releasing data for improved governance, releasing data for innovation. They are five basic principles of ADRN. ADRN open public law data to anyone who wants to explore and investigate academically. So after reviewing research proposal, the researchers can access public data in secure environment. To protect sensitive data or personal data, ADRN provides security workshops and allows users to access only via virtual terminal. So researchers or users, they cannot manipulate low data. That means ADRM provides very uh, uh, secure environment for the users. OK, next step is the utilization of data. So if the governments across the globe, if they establish a, a strong legal foundation, it's a time to uh, uh, enjoy the benefits of a data-based government. So once the systematic preparation has been done, the data-based government can improve public service efficiency. That is a first direct advantage. 
This is a direct impact of a data-based government. First case I will introduce is a Boston city government case. Boston city government collaborated with restaurant review app Yelp to improve sanitation inspection accuracy. Yelp provides customers restaurant review data and Boston City and Yelp co-hosted a hackathon event so that many programmers participate in competition to win a prize money. Programmers, they analyze the huge amount of text data, that is restaurant review data, to understand emotions of a reviewer. For example, if negative emotional wordings are used in a sensitive sentences including hygiene, it is highly likely that the reviewer is dissatisfied with the hygiene of the restaurant. The data-based inspection model developed by winning team substantially improved the sanitation inspection accuracy. Second example is the fireball system of the United States. Atlanta Fire Department and the Georgia Tech collaborated to make a data-based fire forecasting system, Firebird. Firebird uses numerous data sets such as the location of a building, fire case history, weather, building structure, criminal case, the number of shooting permits, etc. To make a fire forecasting index and visualize this information on the map. Despite the difficulty of prediction, Firebird recorded 73% of prediction accuracy, which is quite high. Estonia, pursuing a strong data-based government, it also has a good example called uh, Satikars. Estonian government has provided subsidies to farms household, which moves their land property in time. However, checking this demands lots of human resources. So Estonian government introduced automated satellite-based information system to verify the mowing requirements of agricultural subsidies. So as we can see in this image, green area is mowed, red is unmowed, orange is late mowed areas. In 2018, site pages are completely replaced to this automated satellite-based information system. Recently, UK government utilized the data to react COVID-19 crisis. Although social distancing was introduced in early days of COVID-19, it is difficult to determine what meters would be appropriate for social distancing in a crowded areas like London. To investigate this, UK government a system are called a D-LISC that can analyze the floating population and population density in London in real time based on CCTV image data. By providing information on mobility trend and changes in London areas, it contributed to setting up strategies for uh, dispersing the uh, floating population. This is also a very interesting case showing the power of big data and AI analysis. Intelligent diagnosis using only cough recording. AI learns hundreds of thousands of cough sound samples to identify unique sound patterns appearing in COVID-19 patients. So AI can identify 100% of cases without COVID-19 and 98.5% of confirmed cases. This model can be used to identify a symptom symptomatic infection. Also, this model can make it possible to implement telemedicine in remote areas or remote areas where it is difficult to provide medical service properly. The previous case were things that government used to 
use data to increase the efficiency of a public administration than it has been doing. For example, as we saw in the case of Estonia, it was difficult for a person to check the land one by one, but by analyzing satellite imagery with artificial intelligence, the government can easily make a decision at once without having to visit the land individually. However, in addition to improving administrative efficiency, data-based government can play a new role in providing a new policy opportunities that were previously impossible, that was not possible. The first case fall into this category is Pol.is in Taiwan, AI-based deliberate decision-making support platform. When the Taiwan introduced a sharing tax service, Uber, there was a huge social conflict. Some strongly supported this new service while others strongly opposed it. To understand people's opinions and the possibility of opinion changes, Pol.is created to analyze opinions on the introduction of a shared tax service using social media data. Pol.is suggested various statements and participants make a judgment of disagreement or disagreement or disagreement or reservation with respect to statement presented on social media. By analyzing the judgment data and grouping stakeholders according to their similarity, the optimal decision-making condition that can be satisfied by majority can be found. So, this uh, opinion mining, emotional analysis, it helps the government to make a decision and help them to find optimal uh, statement, optimal policy condition which can satisfy most of the people. Another interesting case is the uh, EU's uh, tactic, prevention of uh, dementia and social isolation in elderly. Mixed Reality Program, MR, was developed to promote social interaction and provide mental and physical training of elderly. So multiple participants can play board games or play sports with virtual avatar trainers. And it, it also provides optimized service based on the personal information and various data. This is an interesting case in that various types of data are used with various digital technologies such as a mixed reality. The final case is a petition system of Korea which transformed the function of a petition from feedback to feed forward. The Korean government introduced various machine learning technologies such as topic modeling, opinion mining, to focus the petition in advance. Thanks to the analysis of petition content, Korean government was able to preemptively develop policies through data-based civil petition prediction. For example, the Korean government analyzed 103,117 petitions between January 2020 and May 2020. Based on this analysis, the Korean government preemptively developed 68 policy agendas on COVID-19 and informed these, related, these uh, newly developed agendas to related government ministries for them to improve their policies in advance. Let's summarize what we have explored in this Model 3-2. The first step of the data-based government is a systematic preparation such as a legal foundation. Data-based government provides two benefits, the improvement of efficiency of a current public administration. Further, extensive data analysis and utilization can uncover new policy opportunities that were previously impossible. That's a important benefits of a data-based government. Thank you very much.